Assalamu alaikum and welcome to today's episode of The Voice of the Present. Today we will be discussing social media and mental health and we have invited Zafar Nassim, who is an incoming freshman at the University of Maryland, double majoring in neuroscience and business management. Zafar joined his first ILIA retreat in middle school and attended many ILIA programs. As time went on, Zafar's involvement within ILIA began when he received as an opportunity to make a difference in the community by attempting to solve a problem of his choice. Zafar learned many practical and professional skills which allowed him to apply for and earn a grant which allowed him to fund and deliver his situational leadership workshop to teens across Baltimore. Soon after, Zafar was appointed as a vice president and director of the ILIA internship program. First off, I want to start by talking about the positive social media since there's such a negative aspect to it. So what do you think some positive social media include? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of um, sort of stigma around social media, especially with parents around thinking that social media is really taking over, which is true to some degree. However, um, since social media is a really new um, technology and a lot of people are embracing it, there are a lot of positives that come with it. Uh, some positives that I can think of and I've done like a good amount of research on in the past is that a social media is a means through putting the entire world at your fingertips. It's a means of connecting to such a really wide audience without spending as much money as it would necessarily would if you're trying to do it in person or in a more um, traditional means. Um, it allows you to forge and maintain relationships. I know for me personally, um, I've moved around a lot. I've tried to make friends and you know, I've lost a lot of friends because of the whole moving process. However, social media has made it, made it very easy for me to maintain those relationships, to keep in touch with these kind of people. So how do that serve me well in my social life? Um, I guess another really big thing that I guess everyone's really seeing now during the age of you know, all this um, Black Lives Matter and all these amazing movements that are happening is that it allows us to establish a sense of social awareness and empathy for a lot of different situations. We look at what happened in Lebanon just a couple of days ago. Social media is a really big, powerful means of getting the word out there as to what happened, how you can donate, how you can help. And it develops a sort of aura of social sympathy because now everyone's under that influence that, okay, my peers care about this, I should care about this too. So obviously there's like the psychological aspect of, you know, peer, um, you know, what your peers are doing and how that influences you. But at the end of the day, it does help get the word out and create empathy around certain things. Another amazing thing that I think a lot of people when they created social media in the first place, uh, never thought would happen is that social media has become a platform to showcase your talents. It's become a platform to showcase your skills. Um, now you see the whole, like, there's a whole new thing uh, if you want to pursue a career in content creation where you can create content for other people to watch and then, you know, entertain them and stuff like that. So it's a means of um, boosting the economy because of that. Um, it's giving people livelihood. And so there's a lot of benefit that comes out of social media. Um, as well as I think one thing that a lot of students use is um, softwares like LinkedIn and um, Portfolium stuff like that to create a positive digital footprint of themselves so that they can showcase not only their skills, but show that they're a really meaningful person to society that they can contribute. So those are some of the really good positives of social media that I could think of. So as you mentioned, there are a lot of benefits to social media, but why do you think that it has such a strong negative impact on youth's mental health? That's a great question. So um, as human beings, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really created us to be very social. We're very curious. We're really tactile. We're not really made to sit with our phones and, you know, keep tapping on it. And I know there was, there was a recent study um, done by the University of Pennsylvania that, you know, social media apps such as Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all these different social medias are instead of cre um, increasing, um, you know, um, increasing the likelihood of feeling that you're, you know, with people, it's decreasing it. So it's making you feel more lonely inside because you're not being able to, you know, actually interact with people on a more human level. And I think that's the real um, sort of root cause of all the psychological and mental health issues that plague youth today is that because um, social media is on a social platform or of a virtual platform, it isn't allowing us to make more human interactions with them. And we as human beings thrive off of human interactions. That's, that's the reason why we go to school in person so we can learn much better. It's hard to learn in a virtual environment. Let's be, you know, let's be sure about it. Um, so that's why there, uh, that's really the root cause of all the negatives of social media. It causes isolation and it causes depression and anxiety because you feel that, oh, nobody really cares about me. 
people are going behind, you know, I want this many followers, you know, I won't follow you back because I want my, my I want followers, you know, it creates a sense of selfishness. And, you know, because you're not able to have human um, conversations with people, you're not really able to understand, you know, where they're coming from. And it really breaks relationships as well. So that causes, you know, stuff like depression and anxiety. Um, there are also a lot of problems that come with new developments. I'm sure that everything has its benefits, but then also things have their negatives. So I think one negative that used to be around, I think it's it's really prevalent still, but it was really prevalent when social media first came was cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is a really big problem. It's plaguing a lot of kids. It's causing a lot of problems and it's deteriorating people's mental health. And I'm sure you've known, uh, people know that, you know, people have gone to the brink of suicide because of it. And obviously, all these mental health implications are not good for especially for our youth. So what do you think that there's some signs that social media has been impacting someone's mental health? That's a good question. So um, really you would have to look at the standard um, sort of symptoms of ex you know expressing mental health or depression, whether it's somebody's always taking the blame for something that they've done. When you try to you know confront somebody, they always have a negative attitude towards it. So let's give a hypothetical example. Let's say that you found out that your friend failed an exam the other day. You text them, like, hey, what's up? Like, are you okay? And then they start ranting negative comments about themselves, like, oh, I could have done better. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, you know, they're always negative about the situation that they're in. And that's a really big sign that maybe they're, you know, facing something, you know, depressive or they're really anxious or something like that. Um, Another way to identify whether or not somebody is um, experiencing mental health issues is that they simply don't want to talk to you. They're acting out of the ordinary. They're not behaving in the same way that they normally would. Um, another way to see it is that they start to ignore you. There's definitely something wrong when nobody wants to talk to you in the way they are. And if you can tell behind the screen um, that they're not smiling, you know very well that you know they're not doing well. I think um, that's so, because social media is um, predominant amongst the youth, and I think that the youth know each other much more better than you know parents and their youth. Um, so that you know your friend, you guys are friends, for example, you have two friends, you guys know each other very well, and you can tell when something's wrong even when you're not able to see them. And I think that's really powerful about you know at least youth connections is that you're able to see or examine you know what the other person is feeling even though you're not able to see them in person. Um, so some of the, those are some of the ways that you can identify mental health issues. Obviously, we're in a virtual environment. I mean, if we were in person, if social media wasn't, I guess, on a virtual platform, we would be able to more easily identify, like, you know, you could look at facial features and stuff like that to find out if somebody is, you know, not doing really well with their mental health. But however, because it's over social media, it really relies on the sort of connection that you already had with that person. So what advice do you have for teens who are struggling with their mental health due to social media? That's a good question. I think it's always important to maintain a human contact. So let's take this whole COVID situation, for example. Um, let's say that COVID's really bogged you down because you're not able to go to school or not take a, a test to pursue your career further or something like that. Um, and you're always on social media and you sometimes see the bad things and you're always getting distracted by it. And, you know, you try to reach out to people over the phone or something like that. It doesn't really work out. It's always important to set aside time to make for in-person contact. Um, although we are in a COVID situation, it's still completely allowed to go and have one-on-one -on -one interactions with somebody, whether that's in a park or something like that. So my personal recommendation, I know I've done this um, over the past couple of weeks since this whole thing started, is that I would go out with a couple of friends and just have a good time with them. We would go to a skateboard park, we'd go skateboarding. Sometimes we'd just go fishing or something like that. And it's, it's helpful and it helps us cope. And sometimes when you're on social media too much, it just bogs you down because of all the content that you sort of come and see. It makes you feel bad physically. It makes you feel bad men mentally because you're always stuck on it. And really just setting aside time and knowing that, you, you know, restricting yourself to certain time limits when it comes to using social media, that's what's most beneficial. Um, also adding on, how should like family or friends who know someone who's struggling with their mental health because social media deal with it? Like how should they help out? Mm, that's a good question. So when it comes to, um, let's say if it's a really escalated situation and you're trying to you know, converse with a child or something about what they're facing with social media, maybe they're not really being compliant about it. 
it's really important to also reach out to professionals in the field and know what they're doing. I think like one really good um, resource that we have here at ILIA is the Youth Crisis Line. Um, even though the person might not be, you know, super suicidal or even depressed, it, but if they're having a bad day, it's still important to call people like the, uh, the people on the ends of crisis lines and stuff because they know how to get it done. And usually, if um, when a parent or a family member tries to confront somebody about, you know, what they're facing and try to talk to them, one person isn't usually enough. They're not really willing to talk to them about their feelings. They sort of need more people to show concern for them in order for them to you know, open up about what they're feeling. And I think that's just the, how the human being works. They feel that when somebody is really facing a mental health issue, it feels as if that they're in a hole by themselves, a really dark hole by themselves, and that nobody understands them, nobody reaches them. And it's important to get multiple people to climb into that hole with them, get to know what's happening with them, empathize with them, and then take them out of the hole with them. And it's really important to get the professionals involved, as I mentioned earlier. I think getting professionals involved through crisis line work, or even somebody that's close to the person, that will help tremendously. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. Jazakallah khairan, thank you for your time and your advice. It was very much appreciated. No problem, inshallah. Anytime. Assalamu alaikum and have a great day. Wa alaikum